Welcome to the third part of the Hoyer videos and this one is about the Hoyer front pre-war model and I'm not gonna cover parts that I covered in the first video and uh, the second one with the primers so I'm just gonna talk about how to take it apart um, what to address when storing one and that should be shorter than the primus model but no need to repeat stuff you already know so to take it apart the first thing is you need to remove the stop pin and if you remember the patent the patent had a nice blade on the back a stop blade which is a good idea because um, you can open the wires all the way but they opted for a stop pin you can see it here and a stop pin is almost impossible to remove by hammering I don't even know which way it has to go because it's always usually it's mushroomed and bent it's really mushroomed you can see it and it's mushroomed so it probably needs to go down but sometimes it sticks out a bit at the top too so when you hammer on it, it's gonna mushroom on the top and um, you can try heat and what I figured out is you have to drill it out And once you have drilled it out, you can prepare to remove the dynamic jaw, which is in this case the round bar and the front side. So what you need to do is uh, what you need to do is if it's all rusty over here, and it usually is because this side sticks out and if it's sitting in a corner of a shed somewhere, this is going to rust. You need to de-rust it, use some uh, sandpaper and uh, gently remove the rust. Don't remove too much material, you don't want to decrease the diameter of that round bar too much. And then you check the end. Sometimes it's a little bit wider at the end here, so you might need to file this down a little bit to make this all the same diameter and then you shake the groove on the bottom if it's dirty and grimy clean this out also put plenty of oil on the whole thing inside the groove that's the thing you need to do first so you can actually move it and once you've done that you need to remove those two set screws that's one here and that's one there and they might be hidden underneath some dirt but you need to get them out I'm gonna do that right now and you shouldn't lose them um, it will work without them but then you will have a lot of play in the dynamic jaw because as you've seen on the pen they push the key inside the groove and uh, tighten the whole wires up so you really don't want to lose them. Now once you have them out you can open the wires. It might be hard to open the wires but you open it all the way Now we disengage the lead screw from the nut and if the wire, if this is all rusty and you had problems get to getting it open, it probably you won't be able to pull this out. What you can do is, if you don't have a press, you need two people and a sturdy bench and you just put it like so and one holds the wires because otherwise the uh, 
dynamic jar is going to fall down. So one has to hold it. Now, then you need some hard wood and you put it in like so and then you hammer the dynamic jar out without hitting the, the key which is here. So just hammer it out like so but we need a sturdy bench for that and the second person holding the dynamic jar otherwise it's gonna hit the floor once you get it out. So in my case it slides out easily like so and you have it apart. And I've seen people that don't dare to do that uh, so they don't really take it apart but you really need to take it apart if you want to service it and let's start with the dynamic jaw as I mentioned you need to polish this so it slides easily inside the static jaw and I don't polish it like to a mirror finish because um, you don't want to take off a lot of material you want to keep the original diameter as much as you can and don't paint this um, I don't know who painted that but you only paint up to this part and this stays bare metal and once you clean that up you also should clean up the groove if there are indentations here you want to file this down so that this this is this moves the key engages the sides of the groove so the sides need to be smooth, especially on the top, like you can see. You can see there's a little bit nicks and stuff, you should remove that. You have a center points for a lathe on both sides, so if you have a lathe big enough, you can clamp this in and uh, clean this up a little bit. Um, you also need to make a new stop pin. So for a new stop pin, you can make a normal pin again and stick it in or you can, what I figured out is a good alternative, is to cut a thread in here. Once you cut a thread in, you need to find bolts like that. You see this move portion is smaller than the thread size, so that's ideal. If you have one where this is thicker, you might want to turn this down. And what you do is, you have to imagine this uh, screwed in from the top. So you just cut off the head and file it down a bit and make a slot on the top. And then you can just screw it in from the from the top and have a set screw. That works a stop pin and it, you will be able to get it out without problems. Another alternative would be to make a plate like in the patent. Like um, you twirl this and tap this and then you make yourself a nice plate that uh, just has to have the same diameter as this because the key will hit the plate it's always the, the stop is the key at the bottom and uh, that has the benefit of you will be able to open the wires a centimeter wider because it won't stop at the pin but at the plate and that is okay because Hoyer's, Hoyer made it so that if you stop at this point you, your lead screw is still engaged to half a nut so it's always been acceptable to use the vise without the stop pin but having a stop plate here would be the best but if you make yourself a set screw or a pin it's okay too so that's about it on the dynamic jaw the static jaw there is the key inside I'm gonna remove the key just pops out like so and the key uh, is quite simple mach machined there it is and as I say the sides engage 
this key moves inside the groove like so. If the key has bottomed out in the slot, but there are still play in the jaws, you can try filing off the top of the key or make some shims for it. That's about the key. And you have the um, the way for the round bar and I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, no, I can see it. You see this? These are felt rings. They are on both sides. And those are the dirt wipers. And you should replace them. And you can still buy them. I have some here. Like so. And um, they are standardized. They are called DIN rings in German. And they are used where yeah, today they would use O-rings uh, for axles and back then, like 100 years ago, they used the felt rings. It wasn't very effective, but they are standardized and you just need to find the one that matches the diameter of the round bar. And so you pull the old ones out and put the new ones in and what will happen then is that these stick out quite a bit into the way here and this will make reassembling the wires quite hard so you might want to make yourself um, a plastic tube like a follower but it goes in front of the round bar so you put the plastic tube maybe from the back that pushes in the felt ring and you can push in the dynamic jaw from this side and uh, displace the plastic tube. Otherwise you really have to hammer this in the dynamic jaw and you might um, fold over the um, felt and that's not not a good thing. So I thought I'd make a additional here here that's about the felt rings. So to take out the old ones, you just need to pick or something and then you pick them out. Like uh, really, um, they're usually just full of crime and stuff, so you can't really reuse them. You see that's mostly dirt. I hope there is some feldering in there, not just dirt. No, there's some feldering. <laughs> oh, I was a bit scared for a second there. So, that's... Let's get this one out here. Nice. See, oh yeah, see. Let's pull that out. Oh, see, it's falling apart. Oh, it's mostly a felt ring hidden beneath layers of dirt. Get the dirt out! Oh yeah. So, this is the felt ring. And I need to get this into this groove. And for this we need to cut it a little bit because it's too wide. If you put it in like so, you won't get it all in. So, we cut it. And I need to cut a little bit out, like not that much. So I would put the I would put this to the bottom, the cut part. So the problem is. If you put in the dynamic jar, it's not gonna fit in because it's gonna hit the it's gonna hit the felt ring, and so we need to um, make ourselves a little ring thing that we push the felt ring in. So the idea is for it to sit on the C 
it like so and uh, press in the felt ring and then when the dynamic draw comes in it uh, push this push the that thing back and kind of slips over the felt ring so I got it in I made a little I cut a little bit uh, chamfer in so I could actually get it in like so and uh, it's pressing on the felt ring quite nicely it's as good as it we get and let's put this back in better to not have the lead screw in if you do that so uh, yeah that's also so and uh, yeah that's uh can see that it's uh, hitting there, so... So I managed to get it in, um, I just put it like on top of that, like, like so, I clamped this in and put this on top and then wiggled it around, uh, like angled it to the top and then used this uh, brass, this fine brass thing, a rod and it's shaped like a you see that's like flat on the end and then you just need to push in all the felt that's it's not in and if you miss one I missed a bit out at the um, near the key like so because this is sheared off now so this is lost but it's not a big problem and I pulled with all my weight from the top and wiggled and after getting most of the felt in and I got it I got it in and down and it passed the round bar so now it's like uh, like it should be so here's the part that I didn't push in got sheared right off and it's lost it's gone so if you just hammer in the dynamic jaw without pushing the felt ring into the groove with enough force you will get it through but you will have a lot of felt ring lost and it's probably not what you want so I already cut out nope, already cut out this piece it's just too much and uh, let's put it in
course you should put it in before you uh, um, have the dynamic jaw this much in but I didn't so I'm just gonna do it like so. Alright. So just need to get in all the way so and you can see what would happen if we don't um, if you don't push in the felt with a screwdriver. You see how it gets folded over and torn off. So on this side it's quite easy. You simply need to push it back into the groove. That's the problem on the other side that you don't have the reach to do that so easily but with some work you can do it. So on this side it's <laughs> very easy. Just push this in like so and move it a bit and do the same again until the dynamic jaw passes over the felt ring. So that's the problem to do that on the other side is like you really need to push it in like so. So um, maybe if you make yourself a, a screwdriver that is a little bit bent or so. Um, maybe that works. So I, I got it in with just pushing in WD-40. So this is a tri felt ring. So maybe if it's a little bit oily it might go in easier. So I think we, we managed to clear the clear it. It's looking good. Looking good, yeah. Yeah, as you can see, we passed the, the proof and so this felt ring is now inside. And um, also, I don't know, I did put a lot of oil on these and the problem I see is when these are full of oil, because they are made for that, um, when you open the vise, the, the round bar is going to be full of oil and so this dirt is sticking to it. So I'm, I'm not so sure about how much oil to put on or should I use grease just on the inside. So um, I can't give you any uh, idea how to do that. I used a lot of oil for one I restored and wasn't the best idea, but I'm not so I'm not so sure what to do there. So this is all you need to do. So you need to put in, put back in the set screws and you can see that's something to clean up, it's maybe, the, 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 this is usually machined and quite flat but if you see any nicks or burrs you should clean this up too. So you put in the set screws like so. and. That is the good thing about the front model, is that you can really remove the play way better than with the primus. And since the groove is on the bottom, it doesn't really get worn down. And you close this, and see if it's too hard or too easy, how it behaves. Like on this one, it's a bit tight here, but it's, it's still okay. So and what you can see is you have no play in the jaws. That's really good. 
compared to the primes. So that's what I like about the font is that it's way better when it comes to play. You adjust those set screws until you have a good compromise between play and tightness. Especially if you open it all the way, it might get tight because um, you don't use that, you don't open the vise that often completely. So it might be tighter at near the end. Right now it's getting tight, but it's okay and you can see there's still no play, so it's perfect. So these Hoyer fronts were only produced from 1938 and during the war, so they are harder to find. And I didn't like them that much at the beginning, but um, I really like them now. And uh, because they are really, there's no play. I mean, if you have a big wise, like the six inch one, like this, and you get the play out, you have like a really big wise that is very precise. So, if you can find the front one, I would get it. Um, they're harder to find, more expensive but very desirable. That's it about the front model. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something how to take care of them if you get one. And this concludes the small video series about the Hoyer. Classic Hoyer Weisses, pre-war Hoyer Weisses. And I see you next time.